Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and this is my second vlog sharing about my experience between inpatient rehab versus acute care nursing. My name is Alma, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, and I'm a nurse, and this is my channel. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is going to be my second vlog. First of all, I want to apologize sa bosses ko. I'm still recovering from acute laryngitis. But um, thank God it, I'm negative for COVID, for strep, for flu. Uh, ayoko lang talagang magkaroon ng gap yung sa pag-upload ng videos kasi if more than a week baka atakin ng katamaran. Sayang naman kasi may mga nurses nang nag-message, nag-subscribe, saka nag-comment. So I just really wanna keep it going. So thank you for bearing with me. So for this video, I'm going to share my experience and just a basic comparison between inpatient rehabilitation nursing and acute patient care setting nursing. Kasi both po, yun po yung bedside experience ko so far. So just a basic background of my nursing career. I have been an RN po since 2007. It's 2022. Out of that 15 years, 12 years po ay nasa bedside. I had around two years of outpatient, as in outpatient clinic, saka ambulatory surgical care, specifically sa mata ophthalmology. And then I had a year and a half as utilization review nurse. Pero prior to coming to America, I was seven years straight sa bedside po in the Middle East, specifically sa Abu Dhabi, sa UAE. So, yung seven years prior to coming to America sa Abu Dhabi, I was actually working sa step-down ICU. We call it their HDU, High Dependency Unit, and I think they call it here in America as Progressive Care Unit. But basically, it's high acuity. Patients are um, closely monitored, vital signs. Everybody is hooked on cardiac monitors, and it's really a busy, busy area. In the USA, it's just been 15 months that we came here, so I have been working for 15 months as well as an inpatient rehabilitation nurse. Okay, let's talk about patient care ratio. Uh, in step-down ICU slash HDU slash progressive care, ang usual patient care ratio is 1 is to 4. Yung 4 max na yun, kasi talagang busy na kayo nun, hindi na kayo makakaupo, baka hindi kayo makapag-break, kahit anong break yan, lunch break, toilet break. <laughs> talagang busy yun. Ang average is 1 is to 3. When it comes to inpatient care, here at least sa facility ko, in the state that I'm working in, uh, it's 1 is to 7. Um, if low ang census ng hospital, it can go as low as 1 is to 6. Pero bihirang bihira po yun. Um, if may staffing issues naman or short care sa staff, pwedeng 1 is to 8. Worst case scenario, 1 is to 9. So sa step-down ICU, the cases that I usually seen there are those patients with sepsis, pneumonia, diabetes, ketoacidosis, cardiac respiratory renal problems, may mga electrolyte imbalances, and meron ding mga alcohol withdrawal and drug toxicity or drug overdose. So how about inpatient care rehab? Patients that I usually handle or should qualify for rehabilitation are those who have stroke, fractures, either surgical or non-surgical, yung mga joint replacement surgeries, such as hip and knee, brain and spinal cord injuries, those who had amputation, multiple trauma, and usually it's from motor vehicular accidents, which is unfortunately very common here in the USA. And pretty common lately, mga patients na may debility. So, debility is basically a prolonged loss of function from long-time bed confinement or prolonged hospitalization. So, it is important to note that a lot of patients have comorbidities or other conditions that can pose a challenge for you during your shift. I will discuss the challenges that I so far experienced further along this video. Let's talk about the unit and room setup, yung differences. So, main differences I would say is, syempre, may cardiac monitors lahat ng nasa acute care. 
at least doon sa step down ICU and our crash cart is equipped for ACLS for advanced cardiac life support our patients always have the chance to deteriorate and needing to be transferred to ICU so sometimes amin lahat magsisimula intubation, central line insertion inotropes, minsan naka inotropes na talaga yung patient so you have to be equipped for that and in patient we have since it's post acute care our crash cart is equipped only for basic life support if our patient deteriorates we call 911 at least in our facility there are also mobility aids that are always available in each patient's room depending kung ano yung needed nila as assessed by their therapists so either they have wheelchairs walkers canes depende talaga kung ano yung fit sa kanila a lift is also available always available in the unit in case to be used for those patients who are dependent, such as yung mga patients sa may quadriplegia. So the bedside skill that I really needed adjustment to is yung mobility transfers. Kasi syempre nasa acute care ako, most ng mga pasyente ko naka bed rest, <laughs> turn turn lang o kung may air mattress pa, it depends. Pero syempre in inpatient care rehab, since the goal of most of the patients there is to regain their function, meaning help them perform activities of daily living such as toileting, bathing, dressing themselves, eating meals, help them learn how to transfer transfer and mobilize safely. So kailangan as a nurse, you are able to do that. Okay, let's go to the real talk. Ano yung mga challenges that I experienced or encountered so far as an inpatient care rehab nurse? So, okay, rehab patients are supposed to be stable. Kasi post-acute care sila eh. As in, they don't need close monitoring. It's supposed to be a routine care. But, there are a lot of patients who are prematurely transferred kasi... Maybe for a variety of reasons such as they need a bed and hanapin nila yung pinaka-stable na patient na pwedeng i-transfer for rehab. Unfortunately, we get those patients and I have had experiences na kararating pa lang ng patient and pag-assess namin, makikita namin ay hindi to fit. Hindi siya stable. As in, the worst one was yung saturation was 79. So, pinabalik namin. So, of course, if we're a bedside nurse na bago lang, medyo... Medyo, medyo nakaka-anxious siya. <laughs> Even me, as a, I've been a bedside nurse for a long time, pero bago yung setting, bago yung area, it still makes me, still makes me anxious and nervous at times. Another one is yung mga, nabanggit ko kanina yung mga conditions na pwede yung ma-encounter mga comorbidities. So, ang pinaka nahihirapan ako to handle is yung mga patients na may history ng alcohol withdrawal and drug abuse. <clears throat> Kasi they have a tendency to be combative, to be aggressive, and to be verbally assaultive. They might be confused as well. They might know what they're doing. It's, it can be anything under the sun. But you have to be vigilant and you have to practice safety also for yourself. So ask always the senior charge nurse who is in the area, ask them for help. If you don't know what to do, especially you as a new immigrant nurse, ask them what to do. There are some patients who are also demented and yung may mga altered mental status or yung mga nagsasundown. Those are actually easier to handle kasi most ng mga patients na mga ganun, mga elderly na, and they are easily redirected as compared to yung mga nabanggit kong nauna na may mga tendency to be aggressive and to be really combative. Medyo mahirap talagang i-handle and don't handle it on your own if your patient, if your own safety is going to be compromised. So, if if I will be asked which area do I prefer, I'm still in the process of thinking about staying in patient rehab or do I want to go back to acute care? It's not a question kung makakabalik ba ako. Eh. Madaling makabalik. Believe me, kasi may mga, may mga nurses doon na new graduates na, na nag-PPRN sa inpatient and na nag-PPRN sa ICU. And there are 
really short staffed here in the US in general and especially if you have the background you're gonna be able to return to acute care if you want to question is ako I'm still sabi ko nga I'm still processing <laughs> so hopefully with prayers I'd be able to decide in the future kung saan ba talaga ako magsisettle advice that I can give for nurses who are coming here in America, not just, I guess, in general, not just for those coming to inpatient rehab, try to get a recent bedside experience. Kasi, you're already adjusting to a new country, to a new culture, and even if I know English, even if you know English, iba pa rin yung native English speakers here. They have their own lingo, they have their own way of communication, and you have to learn that. And you're learning that, tapos, mag- Really learn ka pa ng bedside mo dito. It's it's gonna be too overwhelming for you. So I suggest if you can go to bedside as much as you can before coming here. Kasi malaking advantage po yun. And that's it for this video. I hope may naman po ako na share na may natutunan kayo kahit konte. This is just a basic comparison between the two areas, yung inpatient rehab and acute patient care. And this is just basing also on my experience. If you have any other comments or suggestions, just write down below. And I hope to see you on my next vlog. See you. God bless po. And subscribe.